remember that ionic compounds are held together by an attraction between oppositely charged particles. For example, a sodium atom will lose an electron to form a cation with a plus one charge, and a chlorine atom will gain an electron to form an anion with a negative one charge. And then those oppositely charged particles are electrostatically attracted to each other to make an ionic bond. Most ionic compounds exist as crystalline solids. Now there are lots of different shapes of these crystals, and the shape of each crystal depends on what types of ions are combining together. Sodium chloride, for example, has a cubic shape. In a molecular compound, the basic unit was called a molecule, but in an ionic compound, the basic unit is called a formula unit. This formula unit is neutral because the number of positive charges and the number of negative charges must be equal to each other. For example, in sodium chloride, we have one sodium and one chlorine that are attracted to each other because sodium has a plus one charge and chlorine has a negative one charge. But in a formula unit of calcium chloride, calcium atoms will lose two electrons to form a cation with a two plus charge. So in order to balance out that positive two charge, we need two chlorine anions to create a neutral formula unit. When these ions come together to form formula units, they minimize their potential energy between the ions by forming a crystal lattice. Just like with molecular compounds, the distance between the ions and the crystal lattice represents that lowest potential energy arrangement. And here's a picture of a crystal lattice involving lithium ions and chloride ions. Notice that one lithium ion is surrounded on all sides by chloride ions. The same is true for a chloride ion. A chloride ion is surrounded on all sides by lithium. This repeated arrangement of lithium ions and chloride ions forms the crystal lattice. When those ions combine together to form the crystal lattice, there's a certain amount of energy that is released. This energy is called the lattice energy. The formal definition of lattice energy is the energy that is released when an ionic compound is made from its gaseous ions. Just like with molecular compounds, ions have a certain amount of potential energy when they are separated by a certain distance. As you push those ions closer together, their amount of potential energy drops until they have a low amount of potential energy. The difference between the amount of potential energy when they're separated and the amount of potential energy when they're bonded together in the crystal lattice is that energy that is released called the lattice energy. The amount of energy that is released when that ionic compound is formed is the same amount of energy that is needed in order to break apart the crystal lattice. So the higher the lattice energy, the more energy that's required to break apart the crystal lattice. So if you have a crystal lattice structure, and you want to break that apart into ions, it's going to require a certain amount of energy that's equal to the lattice energy. This high amount of energy results in higher melting points, boiling points, and hardness for all different kinds of ionic compounds. Over here to the right is a table showing the lattice energy of various salts. Salts is just a common term used to describe ionic compounds. The first pattern is similar to that of molecular compounds. Remember with molecular compounds, atoms that had a small bond length had a high bond energy. They were more difficult to pull apart. And atoms that were bigger had a larger bond length and therefore a lower bond energy because they were easier to pull apart. The same is true for salts. Ions that are very small, like lithium and fluoride, will have a high lattice energy whereas ions that are larger, like cesium and iodide, will have a much smaller lattice energy. The second pattern is related to the charge of the ions. The bigger the charge on the ions, the more difficult it is to separate them. Compare the lattice energy of three different salts, sodium chloride, magnesium oxide, and scandium nitride. Sodium chloride has ion charges of plus one and minus one. Magnesium oxide has ion charges of plus two and minus two. Therefore, it has a higher lattice energy. Scandium nitride has ion charges of plus three and minus three, and its lattice energy is considerably higher yet. These high lattice energies are reflective of the strong attractive forces between the units in an ionic compound. These strong attractive forces are what cause the properties of ionic compounds to be hard, brittle, and solid salts.
The ions are held into that fixed crystal lattice structure and are not easily able to move past each other. So if I were to take an ionic compound, like table salt, and hit it with a hammer, it is not malleable like a metal. It's not going to flatten into a sheet. Instead, that salt crystal is going to shatter into a million different little pieces because you're breaking that fixed lattice arrangement between the ions. In contrast, molecular compounds have a much weaker attraction between their covalently bonded molecules. This weaker attraction between the molecules causes molecular compounds to be softer solids. They will also have much lower melting and boiling points. So for example, ice is the solid state of the molecular compound of water. The melting point of ice is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you take ice and you put it out on your counter at room temperature, it will slowly begin to melt and change from a solid to a liquid. On the other hand, table salt or sodium chloride is not going to melt if you put it on your counter. In fact, the melting point of sodium chloride is almost 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. So you would have to heat it to an extremely high temperature before you even caused that compound to change from a solid to a liquid. Because of these lower melting points and boiling points, it is common to find molecular compounds that will exist as liquids or gases under standard room temperature conditions. Remember that ions are fixed into those crystalline solids called a crystal lattice. Because they're fixed in these rigid positions, the ions cannot move, and therefore salt crystals are not good conductors of electricity. However, many salts can dissolve in water. Once that salt crystal begins to interact with the water molecules, it begins to break apart. And once that crystal lattice breaks apart, the ions are now free to move and can now conduct electricity. In this picture to the left, when I put the probes attached to this light bulb down into a container of salt, it won't conduct electricity. The light bulb won't turn on. But as soon as I take some of that salt and dissolve it in water, now the sodium ions and the chloride ions can move around throughout that liquid, and that ability to move is what allows salt water to conduct electricity. Molecular compounds, on the other hand, are neutral molecules. They're not charged particles like cations and anions. And so because they're neutral, they're not able to conduct electricity. So contrary to what you might have learned previously, water is not able to conduct electricity. If I take the probes attached to this light bulb and put them down into distilled water, the light bulb does not turn on because distilled water will not conduct electricity. However, if I add a little bit of salt to that water, I'm now adding charged particles to that water, and it's the charged particles that are able to conduct electricity.